Also, you nerd. Hey, nerdlings. Hello, nerdlings. All right, so uh, we had a lot of fun at Branson we Con. really did. Now, what was special about Branson Con? It was the inaugural convention for Branson Con. It was its first year for it, so it was a lot of fun to get to be in there on the ground floor, and it's going to be a lot of fun year after year to watch it grow and get Definitely. bigger and bigger. So, uh... Now, for one, it's always fun to uh, go to cons like this because it's very all over the place. Yes. So it's not just comics, not just toys yes. or games or anything. It's nerddom. Yes. Anything that's your fandom, you're probably going to find something there. And, of course, like she said, it's always fun mm -hmm. to go when they first start because you get to see how it changes and grows through the years. Yes. Now, uh, the interesting thing is... They had Branson Con at the same center where we had gone to a Vision Con before. Yes. So it was very interesting in that itself to see how they utilized yeah. the floor space and how they had the booths set up for the vendors. That being said, it was also kind of weird because the whole time, like getting ready for it and driving down there and even walking in, I kept feeling like it was Vision Con. And I kept thinking, oh, I hope there are these people like Vision Con. And I was like, wait, no, this is a brand new show. So. That was kind of that was kind of weird. <laughs> now the plus, of course, for us is that if this keeps going, that means each year we'll have Branson Con and Vision Con to yes. look forward to. So yes. that's that's fine by us. It is very fine by us. All right. That also on the being the first year, we did get um, special badges. If you pre-ordered your tickets, we got special con badges that says. Um, founding members and you could purchase these but the ones you purchased didn't say founding member on them so these were very special so we were very excited to get these because we are founding members so what were some of the things that you liked about Branson Con? well for one I love seeing all of the cosplayers on the floor like all of the people that come just for Branson Con you know for the convention itself yes. they're not vendors they're not you know special guests or anything they're just there, they're dressed up, they're showing off their fandoms. I always love that because it's always so much fun to see, you know, who's dressed up as what, kind of what the, uh, maybe the reigning theme is. Yes. Although I will say, there really wasn't one this year. No, jumping it was back, kind of all over the place with people. Jumping back to when we had gone to Vision Con, there were a ton of Deadpools everywhere. Yes. There were Deadpools at Branson Con, but it wasn't like every time you turned around, there was another Deadpool. I guess I could say the most that I remember seeing a, quite a few of were spider people. Most There were a lot Very of Spider-Men and a lot of Spider-Gwen, which was awesome. I love my <laughs> Spider-Gwen. But on, a, on a, that note, I was actually kind of disappointed that there was no Spider-Gwen love from the vendors. There was I saw lots of tall Spider-Gwens, little tiny five-year-old Spider-Gwens, you know, but no Spider-Gwen merchandise or love or anything really like that so that was kind of sad <laughs> um one thing that of course disappointed me just a little bit about the convention was the lack of video games and there was plenty of merch for yeah. video games so pretty much anything that you can think of to craft there was something to do with video yeah. games there but uh, actual video games not so much uh once in a while you would come across a booth fellow yeah. youtuber watching ellis he had some games in his booth but not a whole yeah. lot of video game love outside of the merch. But we kind of found that this is the same way at Vision Con, too. I think people just think of these as a nerdy convention, and they separate that from video game. Maybe they the do. The games, not the stuff. So, you know, um, I don't know. <laughs> one more thing that I really liked about Branson Con, the way that they had the floor laid out, it made it very easy to get around to all of the booths for one yeah. because the way it was laid out it was it, you didn't have to go like all the way down a row just to get to the next one over. Yes, they, they had it sectioned off very nicely and they were nice wide aisles yes. too so you weren't bumping into people and that gave the vendors a little more space too and that made it a lot easier to get into their booths and look at stuff without you know crowding someone that's yeah. right next to you hey stranger I'm going to go bump into you yeah I will say one thing I didn't like about and I hate to keep comparing it to Vision Con, but I think it's just because we were there for a Vision Con and we were there for a Branson Con. They had the front front door, I guess you could call it, or the entrance at 
the very front door of the convention center and um, you walked through the ballroom and then into the convention center and all of the panels and stuff except for the big panels were in the ballroom but like the smaller panels and the workshops were all upstairs on the mezzanine area and there was no e it was if you didn't read this lovely little um, guide you didn't know they were going on so you didn't walk past them to see that they were going on and the way VisionCon had done it, yes, you had to walk through the front door and up the escalator and down a big long hallway, but that hallway was where all the panels were. So you walked past the rooms that had the movie room and the anime room and the board game room and all the other little smaller panels so you knew things were going on and you saw where things were and it tripped your interest to walk into them. And then they had the doors in the very middle and you went down the escalators. Where as Branson Con, you came in one direction and that was it and so you totally missed everything upstairs. I agree with that. Um, I did think that that was very odd because especially, like she said, in short, you had a lot of the other panels and uh, the specific rooms, you know, for yeah. the movies and anime and even the tabletop gaming. You had them all upstairs of these smaller rooms, which work out perfectly, yeah. but only if you have that center door from that mezzanine mm -hmm. uh, accessible. Because, yeah, otherwise you do have to go out and around. And, again, like you said, I think the big thing is you're not just passing by. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we were at VisionCon, a lot of people would pass by, stop, and look into the room. Mm -hmm. Many times they would come into the room, hey, you know, what's happening? In here? Yeah. And I kind of actually liked going in the way that we went in through VisionCon, just because you walked in and you were on a balcony overlooking the entire floor, so it was almost like a really cool presentation, <laughs> like, here's the floor, and then you went down the escalators, which, um, it, I, I don't know, I just thought that was visually more appealing. But BransonCon was a whole lot of fun because they utilized their space better than VisionCon did. They really did. They took over the ballroom, which gave them both sides of the convention floor to spread out in, whereas VisionCon didn't use the ballroom, and they had to scrunch it up. BransonCon did do a better job utilizing their space and everything. Now, so, I was just going to say, you know, these are just little tiny nitpicky little, you know, this might be something to think about for the future, because BransonCon in general was just a lot of fun, and everything about it was just great. Now, on that note, of course, with those being nitpicky things, it is fair to keep in mind that these may have been things that uh, either convention didn't have any control over. Yes. Maybe yeah. VisionCon couldn't use the ballroom because when we went there, there was an event utilizing yeah, that room. True. And for BransonCon, um, having everyone come in through the ballroom, I'm sure that made security a lot easier. They could probably do the same thing with the mezzanine, but yeah. maybe through that one doorway right there at the ballroom, you're getting people in straight from the street and right into the convention. Yeah. But, you know, otherwise, a lot of fun. Now, let's check out some of the pickups. Yes. Of course, whenever we go to a convention, you know that Lady Lacey loves to find as much stuff as she possibly can. Yes. And uh, I, I think you did pretty good this time around. I did. I did. The first thing I want to show off is something that I got from the Dragon Fest booth, which they um, are a, a school that they throw a, a run fair to support the school. We like to go to that one every year. And um, for donations, you got little trinkets or whatever. So I uh, found me this really cute little blow-up mace that I, I got for a $5 donation. So, you know, he doesn't like it because I like to do this with it. <laughs> but I thought it was kind of fun. You know, it's just this really cute, just blowy uppy mace. So maybe I'll put it with my Ren Faire costume. And uh, <laughs> the nice thing was we did see a few kids running around with oh these. Oh my gosh, so the kids love these. Definitely an eye catcher. Yeah. The ones that I saw that most used was this one and the blow-up crowns. The kids <laughs> loved the blow-up crowns. The next thing that I managed to pick up was a giant D20. A big old foam D20. And we've been having fun with this one when we can't make a decision since we've got home. We've been saying, what, 10 and up? Is this number nine and oh, below? Oh yeah, we just randomize and, it. And we just throw it and then be like, oh, okay. So yeah. she likes her plush stuff. I do, I love my plush stuff. And she loves her tabletop game, so yeah. this is, you know, both it's, world's best it's, stuff. It's actually nice and firm, too, which is nice. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so I did find one Spider Gwen love, and it was a little decal. So um, I have a water bottle that this will go quite nicely on. So that's what I found of Spider Gwen. 
And then I got myself a, a cute little iron-on Hufflepuff patch. Because? And because I'm a Hufflepuff and I have Hufflepuff pride and I want a sun visor for when I go swimming and there actually isn't a Hufflepuff sun visor. Isn't that silly? So I found a yellow one that I'm just going to iron this onto it. Make my own. <laughs> And, of course, I love my Amanda Lynn chain mail, and we had to stop by her booth, and I... Plug, plug, links in the description. Of course. And so, I, my eye was caught by this lovely glow-in-the-dark chain mail flower, and to go with it, I got a little tiny chain mail necklace. Now, and, just a quick note, so these are scale mail, they are, but, but they're, then they're held together with the chain mail, exactly. right? Exactly, yes. And these are actually plastic. Um, as opposed to the normal metal ones, um, but I think that just lends better to the glow-in-the-dark part. The next thing I got was just a just a fun, plain, but not so plain, <laughs> just a scale mail keychain, because I love petting the chain mail. It's super fun. Which you discovered how much fun it was when I made you try on oh, the yes. tie. A mandolin <laughs> chain mail makes ties, and you can either get one with the typical chain mail, or with the scale, or the scale mail, mail like this. and it is very soothing to just stand there and kind of run your fingers down the. It's tie. funny because he he never actually made fun of me, but he would kind of give me a little bit of a hard time because I've got a bracelet made out of the chain the cha the scale mail, and I want to get one of the breastplates, and I'm like it's just so much fun to pet and everything, and he was like uh huh, and then I made him try on a tie, and he started to, he just didn't even realize he was doing it. He's like okay, now I get it. And then the last thing I got from, from Miss and Lynn Mandolin are these really cute, tiny little snowmen made out of little tiny chain mail. But they're adorable. They've got little scarfs on, and they're just super duper cute. So that's what I got from Miss Amanda. And then, of course, you know, I love my Lego figs, my mini Lego figs. So I went a little crazy probably this time. Oh, with the there figs. was no shortage of Lego mini figs no. there. Uh, there were two booths in particular that had fantastic collections. Yeah. Uh, one of them had a really cool setup, like a bunch of little like mountain. Yeah, things. mountains and rivers and valleys and. It was and really the other cute. guy, I mean, he just had everyone. I mean, they were kind of on a stair step. And mm -hmm. then they were all sectioned off. Yeah, there was by the Marvel the and whatever, you know, the Spider Man, Superman, uh, Avengers, X Men. And so they, they were super easy to find yes, what you were looking for. And they were for. all lined up, too, so they weren't just kind of like scattered around. So it was really easy. So let me start with speaking of Spider. I got almost all of my Spider Verse people. Oh. So we've got Spider Man Noir. Pew, 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 pew. And then one of my very fast-growing favorites, Spider-Ham. I love the fact that his nose is the spider eyes. So freaking cute. And then I got my silk in my spider face. I was a little disappointed with the silk one, though. I mean, I love her. But I was hoping she'd have the second face back here without her um, scarf on. Because sometimes she doesn't always wear it. But, you know, whatever. And then I got... I guess the second Spider Gwen thing I found there, <laughs> Spider Gwenum. So that was always fun. Hang on. And then actually, speaking of Vision Con again, last year when we were at Vision Con, I had found because I've been collecting um, Star Wars, actually just any Lego figures, Christmas figures, and I saw Christmas Chewbacca and then forgot to go back for him. So I was really upset. But guess what? They had him this year at, at Branson Con. So Branson Con helped me out here. And what's so cute about him is, I'll try to move his little thing down so you can see it, is his bandolier is red and green. That's And he's white. Nice. So That's a nice touch. Isn't that cute? So yeah. I thought that was adorable. So there's Christmas Chewbacca. Since um, Sean Gunn was one of the main guests there, I had to get a Kraglin little Lego figure. The sad thing is, is I found this after we had gotten our autograph and picture with him. So, because I would, totally would have had him hold this up and take a picture with him. So, but anyway, and he's got the fin, you know, so hopefully he won't stab people with Watch his... Watch out, Drax. I know. Ah! 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 With his whistlings, if his... Oh, I'm so sorry, I killed you! <laughs> And then, kind of a little randomy, not like, you know, groupy people, 
I got a Mara action figure, which is really awesome because she's been really hard to find online. So I was super excited to see her. And then one I've actually never seen before, Lady Loki. So she's really pretty. That was awesome. I was excited to find her. And then I don't have a short-haired Black Widow with her little electric suit on. So. With her uh, rave glow sticks. Yeah, her rave glow sticks. I've got a couple other versions boots, of her, boots, but I don't boots, have this boots, one. Boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. And then to continue on the Marvel line, I have Stan Lee the Watcher with his little... Aww. Well, I don't think they ever like said he was actually a Watcher, but he was there talking to the Watchers. So with his little you know space helmet on. So I thought that was kind of fun. Stan in space. Yep. And then I managed to, which I've never seen before, either find some video game Lego figs, which was pretty cool. I found... The Boys in Blue. Mr. Sonic the Hedgehog and Mega Man with his little Mega Cannon. Pew pew! And Sonic's got a nice little ring there. Bing bing! So that was kind of fun. And then I also found the Mario Brothers! Mario Mario and Luigi Mario! I still don't accept that. <laughs> I don't think Never anybody, will. I don't think anybody does. But anyway, I thought that was kind of cute. So, so I found those. And then last but not least, I found Miss Zelda. Now, I believe that they went with the Twilight Princess design of her. Mm -hmm. Because she does have the darker hair and the more elegant dress. Which, that's one of my favorite dresses. And then we got a little Linky Poo. And that's clearly Ocarina of Time yeah. Link. He's so cute. Although I just now noticed he didn't come with a sword. Nope, he didn't. He's he hasn't he hasn't pulled it out yet or found it yet or whatever. And then when I bought my um, plush D twenty, the <laughs> guy gave me a free button that says my life is a meme. And I, we know just what to do with yes, this. Yes, I will probably be giving this to my little cousin while my large six foot five and thousand he's huge tall. so ben if you're awesome yes. and you're watching our video surprise i got you a button this button's coming to you <laughs> and i think you know why <laughs> so that's pretty much the majority of my pickup except for i did get a branson com shirt nice yeah so and they did something very cool with yeah the shirts. that's a, true actually something that we have never seen at a con before that we've gone to anyway they don't buy the shirts ahead of time and have them all printed up. They basically had the blank shirts and then the um, the print, and they made them there, which I thought was great because that way they're not stuck with, you know, so many smalls because, you know, everybody's large or, you know, so many... We only bought three three X's and then you need, you know, more of those or mediums mm -hmm. or whatever. They had um, black and gray shirts, and then they had... Um, gray or bright pink okay for the shirt colors and they just they ironed them on well they weren't ironed on there were those steam things i don't know what they're called but they would make the shirt there so i thought that was pretty ingenious because then they're not stuck with shirts you're just stuck i thought with, that was a great idea just the shirt shirt <laughs> yeah a great idea and at that point you know it might be a little easier to uh if you're starting to run low on shirts, to run out and yeah. maybe pick some up. Mm -hmm. Especially in a town like Branson, I guarantee you there's oh, yeah. a place where you can find <laughs> some, some blank shirts. And I mean, it took, I think it took like five seconds. I mean, it was literally just like a psh, and it was on. The only other, the only thing is, you know, it's, it's a thicker, so it's not like that. Oh, so you gotta watch out yeah. for that. Yeah, you do kind of have to watch out for it, but it's a really comfortable shirt. It's a nice soft shirt. So. Um, on the note of the merch that they had there, they said that they weren't quite sure what kind of merch mm -hmm. to have available since it was their first year. I believe that they had some, they had uh, some flasks. They had flasks. They had a, a like a big kind of like go mug that you could put hot or cold drinks in. They had the patches, but the, they didn't say founding right. member on them. And I believe a keychain. Okay. Was a key and uh, the lady actually said, you know, we weren't really sure what mm -hmm. to make. We weren't sure what people were interested. We kind of went off what we've seen at other conventions, and they asked a few people. Curiously, one thing that they did not have that we actually recommended to them for next year... Was buttons. Yes, buttons. Because I love the buttons. Not all, these kind of buttons, you know, the other, like, the pin buttons. Because all too often you will see people with uh, their con bags and yeah. stuff like that, or just their outfits and everything. 
and they have a bunch of buttons. Yep. People like to collect their buttons. So maybe in the future we'll see some Branson Khan buttons yes, like that. That'd be super awesome. So um, speaking of Sean Khan being there, we did get his autograph. Now he had a few pictures to choose from. Uh, I know that he was in. I believe Gilmore Girls, because that was like another thing that they were really yeah. pushing there. Yeah. And that kind of surprised me, because I'm sorry, man, but I, I know you as Craglin. Yeah. So that being the case... We went with a very, you know, GQ look. That is, that's actually a really great picture. It is picture. a really, I really like one. how it looks. Like. And um, the lady there that was taking the money for his pictures actually said that almost all the Ravagers did a picture like this. So there, it's kind of like a set, like if you managed to go to... All which, the cons that they're, the different ones that they're Which, at. how cool would that be to have that whole set? Yeah, and he said, too lazy, ravage on! And then he signed it. <laughs> and uh, we did pick up some prints. Muse Tap Studios was there again. And they were the ones that do the nice little console and handheld characters, like the pinups, yes. the guys and the girls. So we picked up a few new ones from them. Oh. So like the DS man. <laughs> And as you can see, the uh, the coloring is really great. I really like that. Would you call that like a uh, a light blue? Like a, I would say that's like almost like a sky blue. Like sky blue. Sky blue with uh, ocean blue. Maybe. I mean, there's just lots of blues. But you can see that he's got all of his buttons on his outfit, and uh, I like he's holding the stylus. I think that's yeah, cute. almost like a uh, like a staff, like he's gonna defend himself or the world. Ooh. And then the next one... So next up is an Xbox One girl. And I really, really like the color scheme on her. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty fond of the color green. So, of course I wanted to, to display this, show a little Xbox mm -hmm. love on the wall again. Yeah, because we didn't have anything Xbox. We had a lot of Nintendo stuff, right. but not Xbox. One of the favorite things that I had about it is I just, I really liked her... Um, her green lipstick and green eyeshadow that kind of matched her green eyes and hair, so that was kind of fun. She's got her buttons and she's got uh, multiple indications that she's with the Xbox, whether it's up here with the green and and silver by her neckline, or right here on her, her thigh. Uh, she's got the logo, yeah. and it just really comes together nicely. And then, it's not really a... Um, controller, but it's kind of in the same <laughs> vein where you've got the companion cube and then this chick hanging out with the companion cube. And I really like the color scheme there. The the pinks with the blacks and grays mm -hmm. and then the white. I like how her uh, headphones have the little companion cube yeah. heart on them as well. And, you know, I mean, you've got the pink and gray from the companion cube, so that kind of goes throughout her. And I like the fact that her eyes are pink. So it matches her hair and lipstick and the pink of the companion cube. So that one was really neat. I don't remember seeing that one the last time we looked at their booth. And then, of course, I had to get myself one. I got my Spider Girls, my three favorite Spider Chicks, my Spider Gwen and Silk and Jessica Drew of Spider Woman fame. So, yeah. Now, something very cool about MuseTap, of course, there will be a link in the description below, mm -hmm. but they do all kinds of artwork. It is not just game or comic related. They do tons of TV stuff, uh, movie stuff. Yeah. There's all video kinds of stuff. books, video games. They even have internet personalities on there. Uh -huh. So you're almost guaranteed to find something that you're you going to like. You know, something we never ask that next time we see them, we need to ask them if they do any kind of commission work, if they take any kind of requests. They may. And then the last thing that I picked up, if you will, <laughs> it's not really a pickup from the show floor because I attended a workshop with Bruce Holt and I made a shield. That is awesome. It turned out so yes. good too. I know. I'm so excited. I was very nervous because I don't really see myself very artistic and I don't paint very, I can't, I'm not an artist. I can't paint very well, but uh, I painted that all myself. All right. Well. I just want to say, if it is not up already, there will soon be a video up of the entire course, the time that she yes. spent in there working away at With that. Forged in foam. <laughs> so be sure to check that out to get a closer upper look at yes. the shield. Now, one other thing I want to say is, of course, as we were on the convention floor, everyone loved and we had the Donkey Kong barrel. I'm starting to feel like the Donkey Kong barrel is becoming the third D-nerd <laughs> Basically. <cast member. laughs> 
Um, I think that we got more compliments we on that did. than anything yes. else, you know. And we were even rocking our DU nerd shirts. People didn't care about that. They wanted Donkey Kong. Yep. And a lot of people were asking if we had a kid in there dressed up as Diddy ready to pop out. I know. Somebody has also asked if I had a Diddy. So I think I'm going to be on the lookout for some kind of little Diddy cons. Con that would be great. Stuffed uh, monkey, so that like if somebody asks that, I can like whip him out and like throw it at him or something. And be like, yes, I do. <laughs> um, another thing that we actually started using was a nice monopod, which came in very handy. It, it gave really us a few did. more steady shots, and to be absolutely honest, it made us feel that much more professional. We're not professional by any means. We are too. But this <laughs> really helped out, especially when talking to people uh, to get their take on their boots and everything and what... <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Thanks for moving the camera, Paul. <laughs> but to get their takes on what they thought of Brantacon and to learn a little more about their booth. And uh, along with that, we also picked up a lavalier mic. Now we did have that attached to the monopod right next mm -hmm. to the camera as opposed to on us or up by any of the people that we were talking to. Hopefully the audio will be that much more better, even though Peter doesn't think so. He's telling me, wah, wah. he's like, dude, you gotta buy a better mic. Buy this like $180 mic. And it's like, baby steps, man. Yeah. I'm getting there. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so we were trying to step up our game a little yeah. bit to try to bring better footage and everything for you guys. So, that being said, if we have any new subs, we'd definitely love to hear what you thought of Branson Con if you happen to be there and we met you and you subbed to our channel because we passed out a card to you. And anybody else, of course, we love to hear what you think of any of the stuff that yes. we find out. If you love the minifigs, if you love the prints that we got, if you like the chainmail jewelry, if uh, you have some house pride or spider Gwen pride, or if you've been improving your equipment even in small incremental ways, just uh, let us know. Yeah. So, of course, leave those comments down below. Give the video a like if you happen to like it. Wait a minute. I forgot to show something off in the pickup video. I forgot to show off my Wonder Woman sword, because you gotta have a sword with your shield. Alright, so first of all, it is the sword that she uses in Justice League, and even though we know where most people generally stand on that movie, I don't think you cared because it's Wonder Woman. It's Wonder Woman, and let's face it, I do think everyone can agree that Wonder Woman was the best thing that came out of that <laughs> movie. So, you know, it doesn't really bother me. Um, and not to mention, once you watch the Wonder Woman movie, you realize that the God Killer was destroyed. So she did have to have a new sword and everything. So this is the sword she does have now. So I like it. I actually think it's prettier than the God Killer sword. So I'm actually kind of pleased with it. I just, you know, didn't... At first I was kind of iffy on buying it because I was like, oh, it's from Justice League and I don't want people giving me a hard time. But it's like, you know what? It's Wonder Woman. I don't care. It, you know, it's a beautiful sword. It's much prettier than God Killer. So. It's very impressive, the uh, the engravings yes. on it, you know, since it's just a foam sword. There's a lot of detail on it. There's a lot of detail and a lot of different painted detail on it, which is just just amazing. And, you know, I, I needed something to go with my shield. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell because we are always putting up new videos. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for those closer upper pictures to know what we're doing out and about in the real world. And to know that a video has dropped on YouTube, because some, sometimes YouTube does not let you know that a video has dropped. And don't forget, we've got merch over there on Tee Public. And most importantly, our Do You Nerd motto, if we like it. We nerd it. See you, nerdlings. Paul, stop. What's the matter with you? Get out of here, man. Ha, 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 ha.